I notice a trend which seems to come specifically from the United States and it's very disturbing because it makes you feel like you're going insane. Um, and the trend is to change the definition of a word to the point where it means something else entirely. And everyone pretends that, no, this word always meant the new definition. And you're like, hold on, that can't be. So you go and you check on an online dictionary and it's like, wow, yeah, I mean, this, this is a new definition that I didn't know. But if you actually go into your bookcase, into your physical copy of the dictionary and you pick it up, it's like, oh, no, wait, it's the old definition that I knew. Why is this happening? So let me uh, give you a quote from Wikipedia, right? Not, not a far right source or anything um, from active measures that the Russians used to do during the Cold War to the United States and to the West. In the view of the Russians, words and the exact meanings they convey matter more than in Western countries, where the importance of this notion is taken lightly or even dismissed. When the success of the Russians in inhibiting the Western society with the concept of political correctness, essentially based on new meanings given to words and on the power that can be derived from those alterations. To put the latter explanation otherwise, how to cripple a nation by altering the meanings of its own language and by closely associating violence to as many of its words as possible in order to poison them. The process is invisible because it does not consist in creating new words, carrying in themselves influence, but in altering instead the meaning of words that exist already by converting nouns into adjectives or the reverse. Thus, it is possible indeed to sow discord that seems to erupt and grow naturally within the flow of a nation while the unenlightened observer will perceive the process as a society that self-destructs or suicides against entirely by its own. So it's very interesting. Um, using people from the academia, using people that were journalists, using people that were in charge of um, modifying the dictionary, the Russians would change the meaning of certain words um, in order to poison some words and make them unusable. Uh, or try to change the meaning of other words. So let me give you an example of this, right? Misogyny. Misogyny is a perfect example. What is a misogynist? Well, a misogynist is a person that hates women just because they are women. It's a person that mistreats other people simply because they were born wrong. The woman can't do anything about it. She was born a woman and now she has to live through these people that without getting to know her, without talking with her, without looking at what she accomplished, they're already going to assume that she is inferior. Right? So this is the reason why misogynists are bad. This is the reason why society doesn't like misogynists. I don't want my daughter or my wife or my fiance to be mistreated by people just because she's a woman, right? It, it upsets me and as such, I automatically get upset when I hear, hear that someone is a misogynist. So now the definition of the word misogynist is being watered down in order to mean something else entirely. But the baggage, the disgust that people have towards misogynists is being carried over to the new definition. So the new definition, and I've seen this used on the internet, is someone who just disagrees with the feminist now. Disagreeing with the feminist doesn't possess the same danger for society like a person that is disgusted by women. Disagreeing with a feminist simply means that the person actually knows the personality of the person in question. The, the person in question chose to have those ideas and those views, like all men are rapists, let's say. And, and simply like the, the people exposed to those ideas find them vile, repugnant, and tell that person to fuck off. And because he does this, well, now he's a misogynist and needs to be treated exactly the same like a wife beater. Right? So you notice how the language changes, even though the words remain the same. Uh, and I noticed this, uh, sometimes it's not even watering down. Sometimes the opposite is true. So for example, if you take the definition of the word racism, it used to be something very simple. It used to be any type of person that is disparaging towards other people on the base of their race. You know, the same principle applies. Like the person can't do anything about it. He, he is born that way. He is born that particular race. And you know, before someone even gets to know him, before even talking to him, you're going to have people that are being racist towards him, right? So it's vile, it's, it's not okay. Um, 
And now the new definition is like, no, 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 see, in order for racism to exist, you need to have privilege plus power. So it's perfectly okay for certain people now to be racist towards others. So they, they just change the definition in order to allow the people that change the definition to be now racist towards whomever they want. And it's such an abstract definition that's not even usable. Like, what does power even mean? Um, so do, do I have any power? Well, apparently I do, because as a white person, um, other white people are into institutions of power and at the head of certain institutions. And because of that, I somehow draw power from them. And therefore, <clears throat> I have power, which, which is very bizarre, because I could also say, well, okay, but people from the United States then are able to vote. The United States is one of the most powerful military nation and economic powerhouse in the world. And therefore, I, as a Romanian, who am not a member of the United States, can be racist towards, I don't know, black Americans, and they can't be racist towards me because they have power and I don't. You know, like, notice how you can just play with these definitions as you want, because they're very subjective. Right? They're not even usable properly. But they will not agree with the definition that I gave, because the, the purpose of the game is not to create objective definitions that are like tools, that you can use them in language. It's to gain power. In other words, people that are far left-leaning, in order to gain as much support as possible, they want to be able to call themselves anti-racist, but at the same time to recruit actual racists within their movement and not be called as such. So now they're changing the definition and it's basically, well, if you're on our side, you get carte blanche, you get a free pass. Um, and we're not going to allow other people to call you out because otherwise they would have to exclude these people from their movement, which means they would have less support. Uh, and also, these people make very good soldiers. You know, I'm starting to believe that the right has fans, but the left has soldiers. And I mean, like, activists and people that actually get other people fired, get stuff done. But anyway, right, so, so that's my point. Right? Uh, now, I want to show you how this is done in real time. So, remember the initial definition that I read at the beginning of this video, how the Russians wanted to add violence to as many words as possible. And here you have a perfect example. Now... Uh, ACB, which is a judge that's nominated to be on the Supreme Court of the United States, used the word sexual preference. And this word apparently is now violent towards the LGBT community because it's offensive. Uh, she, she's disparaging. And, and all of this happened overnight to the point that after her speech, the Miriam Dictionary changed its definition in order to suggest that if you use the word sexual preference, is now being violent. So this was the old definition. And the new definition says that the word is offensive now. Okay, so this didn't exist the day before. It used to be orientation as sexual preference. In the dictionary, right, like it, it was okay to use this phrase. But overnight, after the mainstream media did, did, did a fit that, oh no, this is offensive, boom, it's in the dictionary. Right? So, so like, again, you as a person hearing her say this, let's say you're a middle-aged person and, and you're hearing uh, this judge use the word sexual preference and you're like, well, what, wait, wait a minute, why is the media saying it's offensive? Like, I, I never thought about it that way. I mean, I, I heard the word sexual preference being used countless of times until today. Let me check the dictionary. And you're going online and you're looking at the dictionary and you're like, holy shit, you know, like, oh, wow, it is offensive. And I'm pretty sure like some other people at some company might get in trouble with HR because they're going to look at their Twitter bio and they're like, oh, look, he used the bad definition. Oh, he's not in line for the promotion anymore or he's not going to get the job. Huh? Because now sexual preference is violence, even though it doesn't even make sense, by the way. Like if someone comes up to me and says, well, V, um, you have a sexual preference towards women. And I'm like, well, yeah, that's, that's correct. I'm not, I'm not offended. It's, it's fine. No, but you see the LGBT community has a certain life experience that are so different and alien to you that you would never be able to understand what it's like. And I'm like, what? <laughs> but like the idea that they're trying to push now, okay, is that somehow you're in control of your preferences, right? Because this is why it's offensive, because it implies that people can choose. Since when do you choose your preferences? I mean, if I go to a store to buy ice cream 
and they have none of my preferred flavors, I don't buy ice cream. You know, I prefer women with big tits. If I see a game that is woke as fuck and all the women look as if they are strong, empowered men suffering from toxic masculinity, I don't play the game because it's not something that I prefer. If the movie is not to my preference, I don't watch it and I can't help it. Okay, I can't force myself to like something that I don't prefer. Uh, now, for example, there are a lot of straight guys that go to prison and, and they identify as straight, but they do the boot sex in prison. Why do they do the boot sex? Because they have no other outlet. You know, uh, the, the idea that a man that's trapped on an island is going to find eventually after several years of isolation, everything with a whole attractive is a reality. He doesn't prefer it. He doesn't want to do it, but like there's no other options. But, but for some reason, the idea of orientation uh, is now more correct because it doesn't imply the ability to choose. It's like, okay, but the Muslim orients himself towards Mecca. If the Muslim orients himself towards Mecca, isn't that a choice? In, in other words, I think like orientation is even more of a choice than a preference. Like with a preference, you can't change it. Again, I like women with big tits. If I meet a very wonderful girl that doesn't have big tits, there's no connection there. Like, even if I would want to have a relationship with her, because like, she's from a wealthy family, she she has a good personality, it's just that, that thing. It's that thing that doesn't make it connect. Like, there's nothing I can do about it. All right, so, <clears throat> who gets to decide these words? Well, apparently, the media, I mean, big corporations, right? Multi-billion dollar corporations get to decide what words are okay and which ones aren't. Uh, then the academia... Uh, social media, the people in charge of the dictionaries, which, again, don't even take marching orders from one or another. They just have the same ideology. They just have the same worldview. And they view that, okay, well, if we help them out now, we're the good guys because we're on the right side of history. And if you don't believe me and you think I'm talking nonsense, I mean, look here, The Advocate, right? This is on September 25th. So just a couple of weeks ago, they use the word sexual preference, shamelessly, with no shame. Now, they know better, right? They know better because they're the enlightened ones. And they're making an article saying that, oh, because she used sexual preference, she, she's doing violence. You know, remember, words are violence, right? So, so why are they calling themselves out? Why, why aren't they telling what happened to this person that used uh, this word on their Twitter? Hmm? Has this person been fired? I mean, they're the righteous ones. Remember that, you know, they're the ones giving morality and wisdom. And then look here. Leon Panetta, Obama's defense secretary, on CNN, saying about sexual preference. Why aren't they going after Obama's defense secretary now? Why aren't they shoving a microphone in their face and asking them, why are you being uh, disrespectful towards the LGBTQ plus community? Because it's not about having objective morals. It's not about creating words as tools in order to have people use them in communication. No, it's about weaponizing language and, and trying to play the game of mind reader and being like, well, you know, we can't really paint you as a homophobe, but we're going to kind of assume you are because of the way you use the language. And we kind of feel like you have implicit biases. Now, you haven't done any actions. You, you haven't done anything that would show bigotry. But we probably know. I mean, we, we can make the logical assumption because look like look at the words you're using. Go to the online dictionary. Go to the online dictionary and find out just how violent you are as a person. And speaking of bigotry, this word has changed as well, just like racism. And, and it, just like racism, it does the same thing. It now uses the new definition, which allows people to be bigots in certain circumstances. So that the people on the left that are raging bigots don't get called out as such. And when you call them out, they say, oh, no, look at the new definition. It doesn't include me. And you're like, well, hold on a little bit. You know, I, I seem to remember what a bigot is. And you log on to the dictionary and you're going to be like, oh, wait, I was wrong. Am I going crazy? I mean, I... So, so the idea of a bigot <clears throat> used to be the type of person that would get violent or aggressive when you contradicted them. It didn't have to be about politics. It could be like a guy that likes a football team. And he, he likes a football team like Manchester United. And the moment you bring up Arsenal, he, he freaks out. He starts becoming violent. He becomes aggressive. He gets into your face. 
Could be even someone that likes cars, or, or like the PlayStation versus Xbox debate. Could also be about politics, could be about religion, it doesn't matter. A bigot was the type of person that couldn't just shut the fuck up about the subject, right? Like, you would go to the dinner table with your family, and you had like this religious uncle that started to uh, morally judge everyone at the table in order to make himself look good. It's like, oh... You know, you guys sinned because you lied there. Oh, you guys sinned because you had sex outside of marriage. Oh, you guys sinned because... I don't know if you had such a person in your family. But the, the idea with bigots was that you weren't supposed to debate them. You know, just, just leave them alone. Avoid contact with them. You're not going to change their mind. And they're insufferable folk. You couldn't go to a party and have fun because the bigot was there. And, and the moment you started drinking, we'd be like, Hey, let, let, let's drink a little bit less because, you know, God is watching and we're like... You know, like that type of person. It's like, he's a killjoy. Most people would avoid them. Eh? That's why being a bigot was not a compliment, was not a good thing. Well, now a bigot is a person who is obst obstinately or unreasonably attached to a belief, opinion, or faction, especially one who is prejudiced against or antagonistic towards a person or people on the basis of the membership of a particular group. What did you say? Like, what the fuck? Like, again... Notice how difficult the new definition is compared to the old one. And notice how, again, like there are people who used to be bigots, but now aren't bigots based on the new definition. But if you look a little bit at the social studies, the grievance studies, it all makes sense. Um, because now they are even trying to push against the idea of the written word. The written word is very problematic for an ideology that doesn't want to use language as a tool for people to communicate with each other, but to use language as a way to weaponize words in order to justify going after people they don't like. In other words, you can weaponize a word today, get someone fired, and then the next day when it's found out that you used the same word, you can de-weaponize it and say, well, there's nothing wrong that I used it. This word was always being used. You can play these mind games with people, and again, like the, the end result is that people think they're going insane. They're thinking, like, hold on a little bit. This isn't the case. I mean, like, I and then when they go online and they look at the definitions, like, holy shit, I was wrong. So if you look at these presentations where they talk about, <clears throat> for example, white supremacy culture, sometimes they just talk about white culture, but like they're both inferred as being bad, right? Like they're, they're evil. Um, they will say that one of the things is the nuclear family, you know, the, the idea of individualism, like like all of these things that a couple of years ago would be good because they'd be like, well, you know, like freedom, democracy, right? They're not compatible with the system they're trying to create. So they need to water down the definition of white supremacy until it encompasses everything that's against totalitarianism and fascism. And they change even the definition of fascism to make it look like they're actually fighting against fascism when they actually are trying to push for an authoritarian dictatorial regime. Uh, but like, that's besides the point. The only problem is that you will see the idea of the worship of the written word constantly being mentioned, right? They don't like the idea of writing things down. Like, look at this article where um, they're criticizing a museum which uh, had this segment about white culture. And yet again, they, they talk about, you know, individualism is bad and the family unit is bad and work ethic is bad. And you, you also have the written tradition. You know, they, they constantly go against the idea of the written tradition, um, which is one of the first things mankind throughout history and in different cultures created in order to have a more fair society and have like the basis to even have a code of laws. The, the idea of writing the laws down on a tablet so that the king can't change it on a whim and you know like today this is the law and tomorrow this is the law. Like people were like no let's write it down so people can see it. It's not even like part of white culture. I mean the Chinese do it. You know like there, there are a lot of cultures throughout human history that, that have done this practice. However, the practice is wrong because if you're a tyrant, if you want to unjustly condemn people over things they didn't do, you can just change the law, you know? And when it's coming back to bite you in the ass, when it's uh, now being directed to you, you change it again. So then now it's fine. 
So in other words, you disagree with a woman, you're a misogynist. Oh, I disagree with Sarah Palin. Oh, well, obviously that's not misogyny. Misogyny is when you hate women. Uh, we should believe all women bringing forth rape accusations. Oh, I'm being accused. Oh, no, well, we need to believe with innocent until proven guilty. So they can just change these things constantly, constantly. So they're always winning. And by they, I mean the people that uh, are working for multi-billion dollar corporations, the 1%, like they like to call them. Uh, people in the, the, the corporate media, because not all journalists have the power to influence opinion like this. People in social media, Silicon Valley, people in charge of these dictionaries, you know. Um, so, yeah, I mean, it's, it's something to be discussed. Uh, but I do think that this is the new censorship of the future, where we're going to live in a world where people have less and less books, less and less written text, and most of the information is going to be stocked whether it is on computers or on smartphones. And you, you won't have control over that information. You know, it's uh, really interesting. Um, there were people um, having files on OneDrive right, and stored it in the cloud. And I think that's the, probably going to be part of the future. You want to store things on your hard drive, you're going to store it on the cloud. And then the tech companies can just modify or delete things that you have stored in the cloud to scrape them off the internet. I definitely see this will happen in five or 10 years from now. Uh, and you know, the only way you're going to be able to realize you're not crazy or insane is to have a book in your house and you just go to the text, you open it and I'm like, oh wow, turns out I was right. 